everybody and welcome to the October 6th meeting of the school building committee. Uh, just a reminder that this meeting is being recorded. Um, we're going to get started. I did not have any public comments submitted. Ms. Linville, did you? I did not. Okay, great. Um, so as mentioned, M Mayor Garcia unfortunately can't be with us tonight. So we're going to uh, review our new member, which I have written down. Let me switch screens really quick. So if we could all welcome Jamie Morrow. She's our Assistant Chief Procurement Officer for the City of Holyoke. So she will be filling the seat that Lori uh, vacated when she left her, um, her office. So welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you. And then to second that, folks, as part of your homework, uh, Aaron asked that we reviewed the membership matrix, see if anybody thought uh, we had any gaps or any misinformation or any information you wanted added. Um, so did anybody have anything that they wanted to comment about the membership matrix and any opinions they wanted to share? Um, if we were missing anything, how we felt about it in general, do we feel well represented? Seeing no hands. All right, we will move on then. All right, so next on our agenda, we're gonna hear from Margaret Wood, our OPM. She's gonna uh, give us an understanding of the model school process and design your selection and exactly where we are with things. So Margaret, feel free to take it away. Hey everyone. So um, I talked a little bit about this at the last meeting, but I have an update because the process is formally in motion. So, you know, just to recap for those of you who missed the prior discussion. So the MSBA approval of this project to sort of bring it back to the process requires the city to go through a competitive process. Um, and in this case, they are suggesting um, well, they're requiring that um, the committee or a subcommittee of the committee look at a set of model school proposals in, uh, in parallel with looking at the Jones-Witsit design that was done in the previous iteration. So uh, a model school in the MSBA process is one which has been identified as um, having the flexibility to potentially serve as a sort of uh, uh, a project on a, for a different community. And typically, if you look at the MSBA website, I think what they've, they've looked for is uh, buildings that have flexibility to increase or decrease the number of classrooms that are in the base. The, the way they created the program was that they asked architects to apply into the program. So um, there's actually uh, you know, quite, a, quite a number of schools. In this case, what the MSBA did was they identified, I believe it's six schools that were, no, it's more than that, eight schools that were potentially good fit. Several of them are by the same designer. And they basically reached out, the process started, we had a sort of kind of a kickoff meeting for the process, Aaron, Whitney, the mayor, and Anthony and I about two weeks ago. And then shortly after that, um, letters went out from the MS, MSBA to the designers inviting them. And then we followed up with a letter providing the schedule and the contact information. So I'm just gonna um, pull up a couple things. Aaron uh, put everything together in a folder, um, but I'm gonna actually, let me first, I think I can open this, pull up the schedule. Well, it's, actually it's in the agenda. So I'm gonna, um, let me share my screen. If you, in the event that you don't have it on your screen already, can everybody see this? I can make this a little bit bigger, I think. Let me try. Here we go. Everybody see yeah, this on their screen? So here is the selection timeline that we developed um, with, um, and then the MSBA signed off on. So. Um, a letter was distributed to the firms. Um, we're having a site visit on the 20th of October. Uh, it's, uh, as it turns out, it's, 
they ask that it not be a mandatory site visit. It will be um, an optional site visit. Um, and then they have about a week after that to provide their proposals. And I'll talk a little bit about what that's gonna look like. What we are proposing is that um, the committee look at those on the th November 3rd, at the November 3rd meeting. And then there would be um, interviews. Uh, the MSBA has, al has also said that anyone who applies should have an interview. Um, at the moment of the four designers that were invited, one has responded to the MSBA that they don't think that their projects are a good fit. So essentially we have Jones Whitsett on the one hand would have an interview and then the three other firms would have an interview. Um, and so the interviews would be on November 17th and they would be here as a Zoom meeting um, with as many of you participating as uh, wanted to participate. So um, it's all, the process is all done in public. Um, the MSBA, I suspect will probably- Margaret? Yeah? Um, the, um, the mayor superintendent who's, on, who's listening by phone, he's having computer problems. Yep. Aaron Brunel and I um, recommend that everyone participates, not having a subcommittee. That's why we plan those meetings during the middle school um, building committee. Yeah, and, and I will say, you know, this process is gonna feel um, sort of a very unfamiliar to those you have you haven't done it before, but first of all, it's not rocket science. I mean, you are there to listen as, you know, the ears for the community, and it's actually a really good exercise for the committee to go through as in terms of developing a common understanding of what your interests and concerns are in the project. So. Um, I encourage you, if you have any questions about this process, to reach out to me. But um, it's not something where you really need to have special knowledge. I think you're all just going to need to, I'm guessing, review three or four applications and then bring your, you know, as they say in the classroom, best listening ears to the interviews and um, think about questions. So, Mark has a question. Uh, uh uh, excuse me for one second. Sorry. Margo, do you want to take questions during the um, presentation or do you want to wait for questions till you're done? Whatever you want, whatever the preference is. I'm, I'm easy either way. Okay. So, Mr. Lubold, please, you can uh, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, so, you said there were eight potential schools? Yeah. I'm and gonna actually share. So, in the in the uh, if you go to within the agenda, um, I've already gotten some of these links open, so I'll show you. There is a whole folder of stuff that was provided to the designers as well as ourselves, and in this folder, if you were to link to it, um, is this set of school folders. So each of these is an application from a designer into the model school process. So this wasn't just for our project. This was as part of the MSBA creating a portfolio of schools that could be considered. And you'll see here, there's two schools by Danisco Design. I apologize, can you all see this? Yes. Okay, two schools by Danisco Design two schools by Flansburg Architects, two schools by Mount Vernon Group, and two schools by Raymond Design Associates, which they're abbreviating to RDA. So are now, all four of those people coming in? So Danisco Design has responded already to the MSBA that they won't participate. Um, it remains to be seen whether all this is basically three firms. It remains to be seen whether all of them will participate. Okay, so it okay. could be just it could just be one. Um, the uh, architect from before. It's it's really going to be interesting to see because it's a, okay. it's definitely a somewhat unusual situation. Yeah, yeah, and I can't really conjecture at this point. But at the moment, I can say yeah. the most number of interviews we would have is four. 
No, that's fine. I was thinking we were going to have eight, maybe more. No, like, do that? no but you can see it's eight schools. <laughs> I got you. No, the, okay. the other comment I'll make about this is if you look at these, um, you can see, see the ES. So these two are elementary schools. And when um, Donna Janisco wrote to the MSBA, she basically said, we don't think these elementary schools are a good fit with the middle school format that you need. Um, I believe, let's see if I can move this over. This, of the Flansburg projects, this is an elementary school. This one is a middle high school. That's what that abbreviation means. Uh, Mount Vernon group, I think, I think Athol was an elementary. This one's definitely an elementary. And then this one is an elementary and this is a high school. So one of the dilemmas about this process is the MSBA doesn't actually have any middle school models in their, in their uh, portfolio. Maybe ours will be the first. <laughs> um, but so they're, you know, they're asking the designers to look at their designs they've conveyed that it is a middle school requirement they provided the programming and site information from the previous project they've told everybody that it's a mix of potentially model school applicants and jones Whitset. and um, we will this committee will be the decider so you know i encourage you i wouldn't spend time looking at the first two, but I encourage you to go into um, the, the file and look at what they've done. But I also encourage you all to look at, um, let me see if I can open this. Um, what they have been, what they've been asked to um, provide. So I'm just going to open a sample letter. Um, so all of these letters are also in there if you want to look at them. But the letter to the MSBA has a set of very specific requirements. So they all look basically the same. This email went out um, last week. It sort of explains the process. It gives the link to the same folder that you all saw before. Um, and then um, there is a set of um, items that they need to respond to. Let's see if I can. Yeah, here we go. So, the, and this is the letter I sent. Well, I drafted for the mayor. So these went out on the city's letterhead. This is probably the most important thing to look at here is these eight questions. So the, the eight items they're asked to respond to provide an application, uh, respond to how you would adapt your building to the site, provide conceptual floor plan layouts, provide any suggested modifications to the building exterior of the model school, identify the location on the site you would propose to put the building, identify any constraints and challenges, and and then discuss construction cost estimates. So all of these buildings were built previously and obviously the cost estimates are um, now either a little or a lot out of date. So they need to, they're not being asked to provide a cost estimate. They're being asked to provide kind of opinion of what those costs might be today in today's, well, in the, in the dollars of the midpoint of construction for this project. Oh, and then the last item is the schedule. So we'll get this, these packages that's going to have the application and a response to these nine questions, and that's what we're going to be looking at together on the third. Okay, so I'm not seeing any hands, but that is kind of the overview of what I wanted to share with you about this process. Does anyone have other questions?
Everybody's all set? Thanks, Margaret. Um, just to remind you guys, you know, Erin um, sends all these links when she sends out the agenda. Um, so it's important to, you know, try to review as much of the package as you can prior to our meetings. Um, all right, so moving along. Um, is Anthony with us yet, Aaron, or did you want to cover the next uh, agenda yeah, item? I'm here, 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 I'm here. Oh, wow. <laughs> you sure He's are. Definitely here in a ghostly format. <laughs> all right, Mr. Soto, Am it's I all still echoing? Here. No, that's not echoing. <laughs> all right, sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry for this sorry. weird angle, too. It's... For some reason, the Zoom app is not working on my computer. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give a quick update on our rezoning. Hey, Anthony, could you try to unmute once from your one of your devices? Margaret, can you uns unshare your, your screen? Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. No. I was yeah. trying to find the okay. doodad. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, Aaron, can you just do the update? I'm sorry, because this, yep. this is not going to work. Yes. OK. Sorry, I lost internet for a sec, so I just have to get back to the agenda. OK. Um. Okay, so our out, our rezoning outreach is going really well. We've had more than 800 people participate across 25 meetings. Um, and, you know, we're starting to get more people kind of coming out to meetings as more people hear about it. So we did, um, some people felt like we could have identified some of the pain points of like some, um, like kind of, we've been leading with the headline of which schools will be the middle schools, but there's other things that are impacted. For example, some schools are becoming elementary schools or some schools might just be coming middle schools and people felt like they weren't clear on that. So we just sent out an email um, yesterday to staff to, to, and families to communicate that more clearly. And I'll forward that to the this group. Let me just write that down. And then um, we have another meeting that people can register for. It's at 5.30 on Tuesday, October 11th. We're really hoping to get a lot of parents out at that group, especially because that's the night that the district parent advisory, special ed advisory, and um, English language learner advisory groups meet. Um, and then the survey is open till October 13th. And then we're gonna do a period of analysis, like a week. And then um, um, Anthony's, which includes reviewing the data and recommendations from all sorts of groups, including the um, rezoning task force, which Rena is on, and um, and then make a recommendation. He's going to make a recommendation to the school committee on Saturday, October twenty second. Um, you know, we'll have discussion with them. It's it's at a retreat. Um, you know, Josh is on that too, um, and then. We're, we're aiming for like, before the end of October to be able to announce which schools are elementary school, which schools are middle schools, where the dual language programming is and who the school leaders are. And then in November, we're gonna go into a second round of outreach um, that's really focused on how to redraw the school boundary lines. Um, the middle school project comes up a lot in this because we talk about planning for 2026 or 2027 when a new middle school building's hopefully built. Um, and we plan for vacating the PEC building as soon as fall 2023. I know we don't have to um, vacate the PEC building by fall 2023, but we didn't wanna move students there for six to 12 months and then need to move them back out of other schools. So while a new building is hopefully built, the students would be at Metcalf, which would be a middle school, or at Holyoke STEM. And then once the new middle school is built, those students would come into the new PEC building and be combined to be one school entity. Um, 
we also the three building the three since we can only build one new middle school the three buildings being considered as other potential middle schools are, are done in Hugh Kelly and Selvin so we've done just a ton of outreach like a, there's a video tour um, a picture tour of it we've on ho um, Whitney hosted actual tours um, we have a champion on our group who gets 100% attendance for attending every school tour. Um, so I, um, that was Raina. So I did want to invite Raina in to um, share some thoughts about what she thought of the um, building tours um, and kind of what she learned about that. If you feel comfortable, Raina, I didn't actually email you ahead of time to ask permission to call you in. No, that's fine. No, yeah. Um... The tours were just eye-opening, I guess, because uh, I've never been inside. I've only been inside Kelly, not the other two schools, Sullivan or um, Donahue. So, you know, just so you can see it yourself to see which of the three makes sense. And to me, it was Kelly because it gives you the middle school vibe. But then you get all the data behind well, who's going where and what schools are going to continue. Then, then it changes because now the data is backed up to another school. Like for me, it would be Sullivan because you get more more of a balance of kids are continuing their education and of demographics but um but it was just eye-opening and it was great to see and also uh, one of the things that jumped out when i was having a discussion with the principal at sullivan were the bathrooms so these are all elementary schools so the bathrooms are kind of like shorter so you got to think too or would this be updated for the new middle schoolers once it gets changed you know because you don't want them to feel, you know, you want them to feel like a middle school. They're going, even though it's, it used to be an elementary school, it's going to be a middle school in the future. So the little things that can be changed um, for them, uh, for the students just to feel much like they've transitioned over to a middle school age. So, but that's what I can offer. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you're, you bring up an excellent point. Part of our November outreach needs to be like, okay, once we, by the end of October, we'll know which is the second middle school. And so like, what would be requested upgrades that we would want to see in that building? And then putting together like a timeline for what that would look like. Um, obviously some things might be more pressing than, than others. Like, you know, Kelly has some bathrooms that are like literally for three-year-olds. So they're like unusable for bigger children. Um, and then I also wanted to invite either Raina or Deborah or anyone else um, who has been able to attend to share their thoughts about some of the rezoning outreach meetings, um, kind of any like anything that you learned or kind of was impressed upon you, if you feel comfortable. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, I went to the meeting at Kelly School and I agree, I agree with Raina that, that really gave a middle school vibe uh, when I took that tour. But when I learned about all the scenarios, I too kind of leaned toward Sullivan for different reasons. And mostly for me, location, central location. But some of the people, so we spread into groups and um, some of the people at my table had a lot of concerns about neighborhood schools and just couldn't quite grasp oh I can't oh my kid can go on the bus like <laughs> you know so um, there was a lot of there were neighborhood folks there that really wanted Kelly because of the close proximity so I just think some sensitivity around um, the community wrapping their brain around okay my kid can can be bused to any location and it's gonna be okay. Um, but it was a great meeting and um, really well done. And there was food <laughs> and activities yeah. too. My son was there and he was playing basketball. So it's great. So thank you, Aaron, for putting those oh, together. Thank you. Yeah, that it was um, the face team helped a lot and, and some other staff members. I mean, we had 50 adults at the Kelly meeting and, um, and 60 kids and then we had at least 80 people at the Holyoke High North meeting and so we had Learn in Motion and the YMC to give activities. We had food like the chips and the drinks are what went the fastest, the way faster than the sandwiches. Um, I think we had extra of those. And we also tried um, busing 
um, because we because like what Deborah was saying, we sometimes hear like if my school's not close to me, it's a barrier to get there. So uh, obviously, so I was like, well, what if we provide busing like from um, we did it from Morgan and Lawrence to get to Kelly and from Donahue and Sullivan to get to Holyoke High North. And we did have um, five people from Donahue take the bus, but otherwise we we didn't have anyone take the bus. So I just felt like that was an area I need to lean into more and better understand because like Deborah was saying, like if families feel like they don't have access to the school, that could have an, an impact that we don't want. <laughs> We want families to feel welcome in the school and, and a busing and I uh, shouldn't yet. Um, any and other comments? Can I make a suggestion on that? Yeah. So maybe it's something that there could be, you know, an extra parent meeting at Kelly or the, you know, we have great family engagement coordinators. Maybe that's something that they could be reaching out to specific parents, um, you know, from the neighborhood there and helping them understand because, you know, they might think that towards the middle school, but they have to realize then it's not a K to five, you know? So yeah. maybe we just need to do a little bit more emphasis on the part that like, you know, just emphasizing not to worry and, you know, transportation is going to be covered and the logistics of how that's going to work out, you know, uh, maybe like a flyer or something could go home from school with the information on who they could reach out to specifically or something um, with questions regarding transportation as it progresses. Yeah, that's a good point. And Wendy? Um, I, I wanted to say I was at the high school meeting, um, and I think the poignant thing that I heard there, and it kind of broke my heart, and I know that we can't make everybody happy, but uh, I thought it was really telling the, the parents that are really concerned about their elementary school students being displaced because you turn it into a middle school. And I know uh, as a social worker, like a, a parent gets called to the school and they can't get there, you know, like because they don't have their own transportation. And so it was like my elementary school student, I want them close to me. And once they're in middle school, like I'm, I feel better about them taking the bus. So there's the, like the safer feeling of middle schoolers taking a bus to school but then also like whichever elementary school gets turned into a middle school then how do those parents reach their children if they're needed at the school and what does that mean for the school when the parent can't get there yeah it's definitely yeah. an important thing for us to look into we've talked maybe anthony has talked about like maybe we should like hire or get some more vehicles that to assist an emergency or something maybe someone can drive them um it is an area where we need to look into regardless um you know we've been meeting with the rezoning task force over time principals cabinet the face team um we've done so much outreach people pretty much have been like i think you've hit your saturation point um here so we're gonna you know we have like another 30, 40 people planning on coming on Tuesday. And then I think we'll have a really good sense of where the community's at. And then what are some things that, you know, there's not one right answer um, and not every, not any answer is perfect. So there'll be some things we'll have to try to better solve for. Any other questions or comments on this? I'll just add that we, um, Dave, I thought I saw you read on mute. Yeah, what's so the, the location of that meeting on Tuesday? Oh, yeah, it's on Zoom. Um, and if you guys want to, I could just send you a direct, um, why don't I just give you the direct, I'll email you the exact um, information so you can just attend. Um, we're trying to do people to sign up too. Um, so remember with, you know, during the pandemic, we had those like Zoom bombings, which is why we don't publicize um, the Zoom links like posted on social media. So just don't forward it or put it on your Facebook account or something like that. But I can definitely email you that. And then I'll email you the, um, 
Yeah, just look at the other email I'm sending to. It has a lot of good li links about um, where to find more information. I'll do a quick um, screen share. If you go to our um, web page, um, and then under families, there's the word rezoning. You can also get to it under turnaround. And then like, um, here's the link for the survey um, that's still open through next Thursday. Here's the link to register for one of the virtual community meetings. This is a great nine minute video about why we need to move to elementary and middle schools. And then this is the, a great four minute video with the photo comparison of those schools. And then this is just like, it's kind of just like, we, we try to organize this where like, if you just wanted to spend three minutes, here you go, read this webpage. If you wanted to spend more time, check out the FAQs, they are really good. Um, and then if you really want to get into it, we have full recorded presentations. You know, there's like a there's like a 20 minute presentation and then there's 70 minutes. If you feel like you want me talking at you even longer, there's a 70 minute presentation you could watch too. Uh, we just felt like some people are like, hey, all I need to know is that smart people were working on this and that's good for me. And other people are like, can you please zoom in so I can see the exact where this, like where the street is going. And we wanted, both are great and respected and welcome. And we wanted to try to like give both types of people and everyone in between an entry point into this. Because since it's such a big decision and commitment for this community. Um, great. Thank you, Erin. Does anybody else have any questions or comments to add to this? Um, I'll just add that we um, had a joint committee of the school committee and city council. So um, we did a, we had Mr. Soto do a presentation on an update from the school building committee and an update on zoning, which was great. So we were able to um, sit with a few city councilors and outline um, you know, give them a good update of where we're at in the project and um, the process and also review kind of that calendar and timeline that we had reviewed at our last meeting, um, discussing about, you know, when we see the project going to vote and so forth. So, you know, that's just some added extra face time that we've gotten recently and some added presentations with some city council involved. So that's good too. All right. So moving how on well, to- uh, you know, sorry, How well attended ahead. was that? I'm sorry? How well attended was that? I'm just curious how many. Uh, we had full committee presentations, so three school committee members and three members of the city council. So Juan Anderson Burgos, um, Miss, uh, Miss Jenny Rivera and uh, uh, Tessa Murphy Rombaletti were the sitting members. And then Jose uh, Maldonado sat in as well as um, Israel Rivera. So in total, Great. there are five counselors present, um, you know, two non-committee non members. Great. So I also emailed them the letter that I'm about to forward you all um, this week, too. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it might be who of us. Well, so Juan will report back to the full committee with an update, and he'll give, like, a really brief overview. Um, but, you know, maybe something to discuss soon is doing another presentation to you know, a, a different subcommittee, whatever it, we feel it might be, or I don't know if, um, I think Peter's with us, if Peter has any information or if he, uh, you know, shares stuff back to city council. Yeah. I think his hands raised. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah thanks uh, for that, Aaron. Um, I uh, did get the packet the other night, the uh, full packet, I guess, from the meeting that uh, you gave the presentation on. All the counselors do get the packet. I'm, I'm still looking over it, but very informative, especially about the uh, looking at the, the three schools that will possibly become the second middle school. Um, I am on the finance committee, so whenever you know we have to bring something up, we have a finance meeting next um, uh, Monday, um, I believe the 17th, right before our full council meeting. But um, after that into November, if we have to bring anything up um, or have the committee uh, any have you in or anybody from the school building committee we could we could do that too because um you know as, as the time goes on we're going to have to make some you know 
progress. I know it's it's a couple years down the road, but we still have certain steps we've got to make, take, uh, and votes. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to hear what happened in the other meeting the other night with uh, Juan. Um, we'll have our next meeting the um, 18th of this month. So whatever um, comes out about that, um, and anything I can do to share. I mean, from this meeting, I could give at our next meeting, full meeting, I could give a brief uh, during the uh, president's report and give a brief report on what we discussed tonight. Uh, I'd be happy to do that. Thanks, Councillor Tallman. Um, Margaret, I would assume we'll probably want to get back in front of City Council for an update um, post interview process once we know if we're proceeding with model school versus uh, going back for our original design. Yeah. Well, and, and also at that point, um, as, as you saw, the designers are supposed to bring forward a design schedule. Um, you know, and I, and I will say one of the things that the, we're going to have to grapple with in the selection process is that the, um, one of the advantages, the significant advantages of the model school process is that um, the building has been detailed for construction bidding before. Now, it, the de details, the designs have to be modified, but in the model school process, it tends to shorten the overall design process. Um, now, that that's what the designer's bringing has to play out, but regardless, whoever is selected, and that's not necessarily, certainly not the only reason for selecting a firm, the designer will be able to present their overall design schedule, which will include a construction schedule. So, and I think that setting that timeline once the designer is on board is really important. Great, well, we kind of jumped in to review next steps and moving forward with the next meeting. Um, so that's great topic and leeway to move into that. So, um, oh, sorry, I don't want to skip over working group updates. Um, has anybody had working group meetings um, since our last meeting? I know Jackie's not with us. Uh, we did not have a communications meeting. I'm not sure, Mark, I'm assuming probably not, or David, oh. and feel free to jump in. Thanks, Mr. Lubold. No, no, oh, uh, no finance either. All right, thank you, Mr. Yost. All right, folks, so moving along, reviewing the next steps for the last meeting and other notes, uh, we need to approve the minutes from the September meeting. So I'll entertain a motion to do so. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for the September meeting. Thank you, Mr. Tallman. And somebody to second that, please. I'll second it. Okay. Thanks, Raina. Um, so all those in favor can raise their hands if you're on Zoom. Aaron, do we have anybody in person? No, right? We're all on Zoom? We do not. Um, Jessica is on the phone. Um, okay. Jessica, if you'd like to unmute to say yes or no to approving the minutes of the last meeting, and then I think Aaron can see everybody else. Yes, I, I, I agree. All right, thank you, Jessica. So I think that's a unanimous vote for yes, unless, it, uh, do I have any show of hands for no? And I should have asked for further discussion first, so I apologize on that, but I'm assuming nobody needs any further discussion on that. All right, so the motion moves forward. Um, so just a reminder, we are meeting every two weeks now as the process gets moving here. So our next meeting is Thursday, October 6th. I'm sorry, Thursday, October 20th at 6 p.m. And then the one after that will be Thursday, November 3rd at 6 p.m. Um, and then there's a note uh, optional on Thursday, October 20th from 11.15 to 1. As you noted uh, in Margaret's presentation, they'll be doing a walkthrough. Uh, so she'll be in town and at the damn cafe with Aaron Linville if anybody wants to stop by and meet Margaret in person um, and say hello and chit chat or anything like that. All right, and then I'll just review the uh, topics for the future meetings, some things that we'll possibly just be discussing. Uh, Mayor Garcia is supposed to be receiving an update on the financial forecast for the city this week. 
Um, we didn't want to rush him to talk about it tonight because he might not have been getting it till today. So um, he'll be reviewing that and possibly giving us a presentation on that update on um, October 20th. And then uh, one of the things we need to start thinking about is interview questions that we want to ask the design firms. So if you guys can think about that, uh, Margaret's going to share some questions from last time ahead of time. Maybe we could send that out sooner so people can start thinking about that. And then we're going to have some open discussion to try to finalize our list of questions at the next meeting as well. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? Mr. Tallman? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. This is uh, to Margaret. And I, I know it's a, it's a big thought on our end with the, the finance and the city council is the um, the reimbursement is are we still slated at the same or anybody can answer this I, I know the state our state delegation was working on trying to do something but you know when they say 80 percent and it comes down to you know 62 percent or something that's uh it's a tough uh sell with the city so have you any updates on that so peter uh, i mean i wish i had better news but um just to kind of briefly kind of fill everybody in so um, the way the MSBA reimbursement process works is that communities are given what the, what is called a base reimbursement rate, um, which is, it's essentially a poverty rate. So um, m all, pretty much all of the gateway communities, Holyoke, Chelsea, Lawrence, Springfield, I'm leaving some out, but those are the ones that spring to mind, are all have on paper the maximum reimbursement rate. Um, however, um, if you, when you actually read the legislation, what it says is um, it's 80% reimbursement on what's eligible. Right. And the MSBA caps reimbursement on construction cost. So when we did the previous project, I believe the cap was around 310 or 313, and the cost of the project was about four. Whitney, do you remember? I think it was around, it was around 420 or maybe it was 450. At any rate, about 25% of the cost of the project was above the cap. Now, that project at that time was the least expensive cost per square foot in that was the MSBA was reviewing. So it, it was a very cost effective design. I don't want anyone to think that it was over because the design was exceptionally expensive. Since that time, the cap has risen a bit. So the cap is now at 360 a square foot. But the cost of construction, as many of you probably know, has zoomed up. So that, Peter, the difference has gotten bigger. Okay. Now, I haven't run the math on it, but I would say crude, the way you could think about it crude, crudely is if 25% was outside the cap before, we're now probably talking about 30% being outside the cap. So I do, I do need to sort of take a stab at, at uh, those numbers, but that I think is the message. And, and in terms of messaging to the community, I will say that um, it, it's better to talk about what you're getting than to talk about what you're not getting. Because <laughs> the, as, as Peter knows, having sort of been through this the last time, um, you know, there were a lot of folks on city council who felt strongly that if they, if the, there was enough of a ruckus, the MSBA would budge on their rules, and they don't budge. Yeah. So, and in, and to be clear about the reason, the reason they ha they have this process is they're trying to spread the money around. The, the money that they receive, which is, it's a penny of the sales tax. I might have mentioned this before. Penny of every dollar of the sales tax that is paid in communities goes into the pot and then communities apply into the MSBA process through this competitive system. So it's, it's your money. You should get, you know, the city should get its share. But the MSBA has real rules that are intended to you know, ensure equity within the system and that they are not going to budge on that. Yeah, I, I appreciate that update. That, you know, as the last time with the, the two schools and, and then the reimbursement rate, and a lot of counselors even stated they were there for the building of the schools. But if they're going to get 62% and now 
let's say the the let's say this school is let's just say 60 million and we're going to get you know 40 million you think about that that's 40 million is a lot of money but if you're only going to get 30 million and the city's got to pay 30 million well you know there's you know i'm looking forward to hearing the forecast of the city because yeah you know, basically but what yeah. i but you're getting 30 million right that's that's what i say you're getting if, it. if you focus on what you're not getting we're right. going to go down the same path we went before Oh, I agree. I agree 100 percent. But there's still going to be people who are going to say it's too costly and uh, it's going to be difficult to uh, we, you're projecting this out 20, 25, 30 years. So yeah. um, we got to make sure that we can we can afford it. That's that's the key. But yeah. I, I, I don't like to lose money. I just like our CPA. It's working. It's working great. I mean, we're getting you know money that we put in through our house sales. We're we're doing all these projects within a community. And and that's money that we for years we probably could have captured. Yeah, and we just got that about you know six years ago. So yeah, that's a, that's a big help. Yeah, it is. It's huge. So, thank you for that, Margaret. You're welcome, Mr. Yost. Yeah, that just uh, reminded me. I don't know. We might want to have our uh, legislate legislative delegation back in maybe after the elections for an update because there was some uh, the last time they were in they they talked about some special legislation, you know, just relevant to. Uh, cities and receiverships so so probably you know after the election they might want to get them back in to see if that's gone anywhere and can you remind me who your state rep and state senator are now it's pat pat duffy and uh, john Vilas. Vilas, right okay yeah. thank you mr yost and then i would just like to say in you know, to Peter's point, I don't know if we have the exact figures on that, Mr. Soto, and I know Whitney's not with us tonight, but if we don't take advantage of this, it's going to be on the city, full 100% expense to bring Peck School up to code, because the district plans to close Peck this fall, so the school will be closed. So if we have to reopen it, you have to bring it up to full code and every penny of that reverberation will be on the city's expense because the MSBA has made it very clear that they will not give us money to rehab PEC because they don't consider it a viable building. Yeah, you know, Aaron, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I think it it's not the biggest piece of this, but it's not an insignificant piece. The MSBA does not cap the reimbursement on demolition. And so the fact that you have a building that is a really, it's considered one of the worst educational buildings in the state by the MSBA. <laughs> um, the fact that you're, the demolition is, is, you know, again, when you do the math, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like as good a deal as you want, but the, the demolition and the reimbursement rate is very good on the demolition. Thanks for reiterating that point, Margaret. All right, guys, so I think that about wraps it up our meeting. If anybody has any other thoughts or concerns, uh, please speak now and forever hold your peace. Um, mm -hmm. If you'd ever like to see something added to the agenda, you may feel free to reach out to Ms. Linville or myself ahead of the next meeting. Please try to uh, reach out about a week in advance because we do meet the Monday in advance to finalize the agenda. Um, so feel free to reach out um, on on anything that you feel like the committee should be discussing. Um, so with that, I will. Karen, can I just add one thing? Um, the so I don't I don't. <laughs> there's no reason any of you should have dug into that folder about the model schools before I explained what the heck it was you were looking for. But now that I have explained what the heck it is that you're looking for, I definitely encourage you to look and ask questions. Okay, so that when we come to the next meeting. Um, we can actually talk on the 20th about any questions you have, and that will set us up for looking at the applications on the 3rd. All right. Thank you, Margaret. All right. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn pending no further discussions. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, who was the second? Was that Mr. Lubold? Mark. All right. For minute purposes. Thanks. Um, any further discussion on that motion? If not, I will see a raise of hands for all those in favor of adjourning the meeting. 
And I believe it was Jess who's on the phone as a voting member. So please unmute to record your vote as well. Just give Jess Hi. a second. Thank you. All right, folks. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time as always. We will see you again Thursday, October 20th at 6 p.m. or possibly on the district's rezoning meeting, which is on Zoom next week. Have a good rest of your Thursday. Anthony says yes, mm -hmm. by the way, to the thing that we just Thanks. I think did. I saw a thumbs up back there okay. somewhere on one of my yeah. screens. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a great Thanks. night. Thanks. Have a good night.